All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche forward, Brandon Saad. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hey, Brandon, um, what kind of went wrong there in the second and what do you guys have to do to refocus heading home? Well, I think uh, we didn't s sustain enough zone time there. In the first, we did a good job of kind of supporting each other, being around the net, um, being second man in on battles, winning those pucks back. And the third, we kind of let it slip away. We gave up some odd man rushes, um, power play goal. They're a good team. They're going to capitalize on your mistakes. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Brandon, based on the fact that they've uh, outworked you or out, outshot you, outscored you in the last two plus games, um, are they in your heads, perhaps? No, I don't think so. You know, they got a good team. Um, that's the way a series goes. You know, that's why they called a series. We didn't think we were going to come in here, take both games. I mean, we didn't play as, as good as we should have, but uh, there's some things that, that we did do well that we can kind of regroup here and have a short term memory. Um, we're going back to a building where we have success and where we play well at. So it's a 2 2 series. It's best of three now. Uh, we know we got a long road ahead of us, and we're looking forward to the challenge. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Glad you kind of just said it, but you've been in enough of these series to know that obviously every single game is its own game. Uh, what is the confidence level knowing that you guys have two of the next three at home where you guys have been unbeatable for a few months now? For sure. You know, that's why we work so hard during the year to to get that home ice advantage. And uh, obviously we'd like to come into this building and play a little better. But like I said, it's a series and we're going back home where we're confident that, that we can get a, just take it one game at a time and get a win. So I think that's the focus. We got to forget about this, this trip here and reset. Mark Spector, Sportsnet. So what's the part of that, uh, Brandon? You've been, in, you've been in lots of these series. You've seen momentum sw swings back and forth in your career many times. Uh, is it much about what you say or what the coach says or is there m more to it than that? Uh, I think it's it's something as a group that we got to take upon ourselves. You know, uh, you could say as much as you want. Coaches can say what they want, but we got to we got to be a mature group here and realize where um, when you're giving up momentum swings in a game that we got to kind of stop the stop the bleeding and get back on track. And um, when we have it, we got to keep it as long as we can. And, and that's how the playoffs go. So uh, it's something that uh, we're trying to, to work on each game. I thought we had a good start rebounding from last night and then obviously kind of ran out of gas and gave up too many odd man rushes and chances in the second there. But uh, it's one game at a time mentality here. Last one here for Brandon, Brian Bolding, Mile High Sports. Hey, Brandon, this is the first sort of adversity this team has, has really faced all season. As a veteran, what do you talk to the guys about? How do you impart some wisdom on them to kind of slow it down and take this as a best of three moving forward? Yeah, that's something we talked about even before tonight where – uh, we just kind of kind of reset and, and focus on things we do well, play relaxed, play with confidence. You know, we're here for a reason. We have a great hockey team. There's no reason why we lose a game or two that, that we're going to have our heads heads down and, and hang them. So uh, it's something uh, as a group that I think that we can re rebound and go home and get a win. All right. Thank you, Brandon. Thanks. All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche for JT Comfort. Ryan Bolding, Miley Sports. Hey, JT, I was just wondering if with the top line being stifled the way it is, you guys are feeling more pressure down the lineup to step up and produce. I mean, it's playoffs. Everyone's got to produce. Everyone's got to be in their game. Um, it's got to be every guy that's in the lineup all the way, all the way down the lineup got to have their A game. And uh, we need more from everyone, obviously. Um, you know, we got we got a we have a really good group in there. Um, we're going back to 
you know, building we've played well in all year. And we got to, you know, keep the confidence in our game and, and trust ourselves. And, um, you know, there's still plenty of series left. Peter Barr, The Athletic. Yeah, JT, this is, I guess, the third year you've gone into a deep series in the second round. How much can can those past two years help you guys just in terms of having been there before in these these deep series? Yeah, I mean, the, the experience plays into a bit. Obviously, it's a little different this year. We've never had home ice in the second round. And, um, you know, we got to take advantage of that. We're going going back home and we got to forget about this one. We will take what we need from it. And uh, game five is a big one. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. JT, could you comment about the experience over these two games here in Vegas and and, and how much the uh, crowd likely helped them? Um, I mean, the crowd was good, but it's it's playoff hockey. We expect that. We expect it to be loud and, and energetic, and, you know, we got to feed off that as well. Last one here for JT, Eric D. Malhi Sports. Hey, JT, in these last three games since Marc-Andre Fleury took over the crease, do you guys feel like you've tested him enough to really get an idea of, of how often you can beat him? I mean, we want to have 12, 15 shots, period. And in the last three games, we have not done that. Um, it's a key to our game is, you know, when we're creating turnovers and we're putting pressure on teams, we're getting lots of scoring chances. We're, uh, we're the aggressors. We got to get back to that. Um, you know, he's a good goalie, but we got we to gotta get more, more pucks than that, more bodies than that. And, that's the recipe for success. All right, thank you, JT.
Take questions for Avalanche head coach Jared Bednar. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hey, Jared, how much of tonight's result was, was compete level and how much was what Vegas was doing to slow you guys down? I didn't, I, I didn't have a problem with um, our intent and the purpose to our game and, and, and the way we competed. I thought that um, for the most part, it was pretty good. It, we, you know, there, we gave up some chances off the rush where they were beating us up the ice. They made some plays and, and got some chances, but I think that our work ethic was fine. I think the compete on the puck was was much better. Um, we still lost our fair share of the battles, that's for sure. Um, a little bit, little bit more concerned with some of the races that we're losing. That they're coming up with some pucks, you know, sending their guys out of the zone and beating us up the ice. So. Um, we've looked at that quite a bit already over the course of the four games, but we're going to have to look at it again, and we got to get more discipline with our reloads and make sure they're happening immediately so we're getting back above those guys because they're coming every time. They're, they're, they're winning their fair share of battles, and they know where the puck's going. It's going out into the neutral zone, and then they're sending guys there, and they're coming up with, with pucks in the neutral zone too, even when we have guys back. So, uh, But the work ethic was fine. Um, Breakouts, I, I, you know, there was times I, I thought we were getting in and out of our zone for the second period, and then we had trouble working through the neutral zone. Then we'd, we, you know, we had trouble with some breakouts, and we worked through the neutral zone pretty good at times in the first. So it was a little bit back and forth for me there, but they're, they have something to say about it, definitely. But it was better tonight. At least we entered the fight tonight and, and got in, and I didn't like the results. Um, they scored some timely goals. We missed on some opportunities, I think, even at the beginning of the third period. Um, didn't have a great power play, but Mika walks in. We missed the net on it. Um, Burakovsky misses the net walking in just shortly after that. And then I think so did Val. And, and pr three pretty good scoring chances that we didn't even hit the net on or force Flurry to make a save. And then Donsko hit a post shortly after that. So um, I'm confident that they had more scoring chances and more quality looks, but, you know, we just couldn't seem to find a rhythm tonight, but it wasn't lack of work or effort. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Gary, you've always said that your best players have to be your best players in big games. Um, I think the McKinnon line only had three shots through two periods and Landis Gog had none. I think uh, for the second straight game, he had no shots. If you could just talk about Landy and his his two line mates, please. Well, I think that that they're they're frustrated for sure. Um, it's it's tight checking, especially for those guys because they're not just dealing with one line; they're dealing with multiple lines. So you you they, they have four lines playing real well, and you. You know, there's people saying, well, you got to get them away from the stone um, uh, Stevenson and Paxioretti line, but then they got the Carlson line that's doing equally as good a job and still producing at the other end. So there, there's there's some heavy lift in there, and we haven't found a way. But they did some good things tonight. And then our last bit of execution, I thought, was poor. You know, we, we, we rumble around in the offensive zone for a little bit. We pass it low to high, our D ball, but it comes out of the zone. Like, we just couldn't, we couldn't get all five guys on the ice at one time executing it at, at a high level. And to me, too many missed passes, bobbled pucks, not recognized when we have time to make a play. You know, lots of times you can't find time, and then when you do, and you still kind of mess it up on your own, that's that that starts to get frustrating, and it starts to get uh, you, you know counterproductive. So I, I think I saw a lot of that tonight. I'll look back on it, but they got to stay with it. You know, it's a best of seven series, not a best of four. I said it after game one. It's a race to four. It's not a race to two. And we got two to the next three games in our building where we've played real well. And those guys have done a great job. And it's, I mean, this is going to be a battle. I, I, I fully expect our guys to take another step in this series and, and in the home game. And our big line will have to be a big part of that. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. 
Jared, when you look at the shot discrepancy the last few games, do you feel like you guys have really tested Marc-Andre Fleury enough in these three games that he started? Not enough, no, no. And, uh, you, you know, it didn't surprise me last game because he's, I mean, we didn't do enough, you know. And, and tonight I thought we did some good things, but I just, you know, even gave you three or four examples there at the start of the third like one post three missed nets on three pretty good looks that we earned and checked the puck back on and but he didn't have to make a save right so um we have to find a way to get to some more we shot the puck and had some rebound opportunities early in the game uh couldn't come up with some rebounds after that and you know, we just got to find a way to just keep working and get a little bit more sustained, sustained pressure. And one of the things we talked about was earning, fighting for our ice and making sure wherever we're earning every inch of our ice. And it, it, it's not easy to find space out there, but you just got to stay with it. And eventually someone makes a play. So um, we got some improving to do in that area still. Mark Kisla, Denver Post. Coach, you, you got that score real early. You had to like that. Talk a little bit about that turnover that led to their first score and how that maybe changed the momentum a little bit. Yeah, it did. It did for sure. You know, I hey, they came out and they got the jump on us in a few rushes. And, and once they get one chance, that they swarm with the two or three other chances. So you got to, like, quickly get into your zone and sort things out to try and prevent that and sometimes that's just stopping and working from the inside out instead of playing on the move and um you know they were coming hard you knew they were going to come out hard in this game and, and we weathered it and we f we found a way to get on the board first but that turnover hurt and and it you know it's not the only one we made it's the one they capitalize on and, and and i think that you know some of our guys maybe thought the first one went in including maybe grooby thought the, the puck went in and it didn't and they found a way to get it back to the net in a hurry and um but we just you know we got we got to be cleaner with that with the puck it was a big mistake but i mean the game's full of mistakes they forced us into some mistakes and we got to be better with the puck and and we need to find a way to force them into a few more where we can uh try and jump on them and capitalize last one here for jared peter boss the athletic yeah jared did the noise in the building have anything to do with like lapses in communication especially on that first goal that vegas scored was was there could the guys hear each other yelling at each other enough or is that a problem at all? Well, it's loud. I mean, I, you can't, it's hard to hear anything in there. I mean, you can tell by my voice and just talking on the bench, trying to call the next line, I'm losing my voice. So it's, it's hard. You can't, you can't hear. Um, talking's a big, a big part of, you know, uh, eliminating confusion and, and, and helping play, helping your teammates play fast. Like sometimes it's just an easy command, go, I got them, you know, whatever the command is, it makes everyone around you sure on what's going on and can help you play fast. That's both on the offensive side of things and on the defensive side, especially on the defensive side, it's important to sort things out quickly. And, um, you know, we, we, we haven't done a great job of that, but we're encouraging our guys to do that. I'm sure it's tough to hear out there because, the, the, I mean, the, there's a lot of noise when in this building, especially. All right, thank you, Jared. All right, thank, thank you, you. Jared.